Uh, the United States spent a billion dollars uh, in the last few years fighting fires and it doesn't do much good because our methods don't work. So we've got to up, up the ante. We really need to use the best 21st century technology we have. That's big airplanes who can fly at night when the fires are not very active. Possibly some drones or something flying with infrared detectors that tell the fire boss in real time where the fire is and whether the drops that the planes are making worked or not and what to do. And the pilot isn't even looking for the fire. He's just flying in a GPS location uh, direction uh, and doing what he's told, watching all the instruments. Mm -hmm. um, that requires uh, nothing new. We have all that stuff, it's on the shelf. And it's very possible that we'd have to have a huge involvement in the United States Air Force because they know how to do command and control. They know how to do these things. Mm -hmm. uh, whether they actually do it or not, that's up to other people. But without that capability, we're going to burn down the Southwest forests and probably the Rocky Mountains. And so uh, at night when it's calm, the forest fire people tell us the fire lays down. It's just sitting there smoking. It's hard to see, so that's why you need infrared detectors. But NASA has told us, oh yeah, we could do that easy. Uh, and so yeah, you have the possibility of actually putting the thing out. Now then the ground troops go in the next morning and finish the job. But they have a chance and they're not endangered. Right now they're endangered. What's the advantage of fighting a fire at night? As the forest fire people say, the fire lays down. The winds die, the humidity comes up, uh, and the fire doesn't do much. It sits around. Often, uh, in the fires that I've seen, people are saying, oh, the next morning, oh, it's not so bad, look at that, the fire must be out. Because the fire isn't doing anything at 8 o'clock in the morning, usually. Uh, by uh, 3 in the afternoon, it's going crazy because the winds are blowing and it's hot and dry, and uh, that's when they're trying to fight it. Well, that's the worst time of the day to fight it. You can't do anything at that time of day. But you can keep it from spreading. For instance, the Los Conchas fire, if we would have attacked just, attacked just the northern flank of that fire, we could have kept it from spreading, and it would have been a 30,000 acre, 20,000 acre fire instead of a 160,000 acre fire. And so, I mean, there are things that you could do, but we have to get serious. Mm -hmm. And the reason we have to get serious is we don't, really don't have any choice. We're gonna burn it all down. And with the dry conditions uh, we've been looking, the forests don't come back. We're going to just turn New Mexico into shrubland. Now the Forest Service says they're doing everything that's possible. You're saying there could, could be a lot more done. Not just a little bit more done, a lot more done. Right. The Forest Service is doing everything that the United States Congress will pay for. <laughs> I mean, they're having to get on their hands and knees right now and beg for 20 new airplanes. What? You know, the economic disaster to the Southwest alone is huge. P businesses are losing, tourism is going down. Who wants to come to a state that's all burned over? When you drive over Raton Pass right now, you see a big sign that says, Welcome to New Mexico, and for the next five miles, there's nothing alive. It's all been burned down. What a way to advertise coming to New Mexico. Sounds like a good idea. How do you get from point A to point B? How do you get, you know, do you get governments involved, the state legislature involved? How do you make this work? Um, I think that uh, several things. The, uh, somebody asked the United States Air Force to look into doing this and they came back and said, well, we could, but it's not our mission. So we need to have somebody like the Congress tell them, uh, yes, it is your mission now. The minute you told them it was their mission, you know, the United States Air Force, there's anything they can do. They're a fantastic bunch of people. Uh, and they wouldn't go in there and act like they're know-it-alls. They'd work with the Forest Service and you'd get this symbiosis of mm -hmm. the best of both. Um, when we told, uh, back in 2000, when we proposed this to the Forest Service, their big reaction was, yeah, it might work, but nobody will pay for it. Well, that was true back in 2000. Uh, the largest fire in New Mexico ever was Cerro Grande at 30,000. We're, we're getting to 10 times that now, and again, and again, and again. And so, um, this is a new ball game, and I maintain that if you look at it seriously, you see we have no choice. Uh, over a quarter of the forests in New Mexico and Arizona have burned in the last 10 years. Just extrapolate that out until your grandchildren are, you know, trying to live in New Mexico. And you'll see that, you know, there's nothing left. All of the Vias Caldera, you know, the only reason the whole Hamas hasn't burned down is because the fires have started on the, west, on the, on the east side. The minute you get one on the west side, it's going to do a terrible amount of damage and the Forest Service is going to work like crazy. Those guys are going to put their lives in danger. They shouldn't have to. 
One thing I would like to say is I would like to have congressmen look at their people and say, okay, we're going to talk about this. Anyone who is in this room who says we can't do anything is excused. We don't have any choice anymore. We have to figure out how to do it. Chick Keller, thank you very much. Thank you, Rob.